we are looking at moral development. This is part five, some application of those theories, a very valuable strategy called values clarification, especially remember your Erickson and Marsha, students in middle school and high school. It is an activity of values clarification. Again, do a Google search, values clarification, values clarification strategy that enables students to identify and analyze and elucidate or describe what they value. And I'll give you some uh, specific examples of this. All right? In, it involves any activity, small group, where students are asked to define what they value. Now again, we're not telling them what to value. We're not saying anything goes because we can set out some parameters. Remember when we talked about morality? That which is good gives to or nurtures self, others, the environment. That which is bad or immoral takes from or harms self, others, and the environment. That can be used as an overall organizing principle if you want. That does not step on anybody's toes. I think all would agree with that in general. But number two, <clears throat> where students are asked to define what they value, list the things. Now, <clears throat> list, rank, or rate the things they value. <clears throat> These things could be traits or disposition, character traits, such as honor, honesty, hard work. It could be people they value. People, individual people, or people such as teachers, police, officers, etc. <clears throat> or rank or rate things they value. And the goal is to get them talking about and organizing. What they come up with is not as important as the process, the conversation that goes on. Now, many people react to values clarification saying, oh, that's some hippie activity they did in the 60s and 70s where we say anything goes. That is not correct. Get some information before you make those sorts of generalizations. Values clarification does not say there is no right or wrong. Does not, does not, does not. It is a way for students to internalize and personalize and come to attach their meaning to values around them. If students are able to internalize values versus simply accept the external values given to them. Here, you must value that. You must value this. You must behave such and such a way. <laughs> These internalized values are much more powerful and will carry students through life simply than external mandates. And again, this does not say there's no such thing as right or wrong. It does not do that. This is a much more powerful way for students to come to ascribe to a set of values. Now, values clarification activities involve these. Students are in small groups. They're sharing. They're talking. Students are free to make choices. Now, within parameters, of course, students' insights and ideas are respected. All right? You honor what they come up with. You honor the stages they are going through. You know that high school kids are experimenting and pushing the boundaries. You have to honor that. All right? You do not want to step in and say, this is what you must value. This is the correct response. No! And there's discussion or sharing in small group. And I put that down there because in large group as well. Now here's a neat thing. You can enhance literacy this way with values clarification and moral dilemmas. After they've kicked it around in small group, you can have students describe in writing to you what they think related to values clarification or moral dilemmas. This creates an authentic writing experience because they are writing to organize and share their thoughts instead of writing a report on Bolivian exports. Get the idea? Everything enhances. You can be a humanistic, holistic educator within the boundaries of the curriculum that is there, and you can create more powerful learning experiences instead of less. Principle understand. Here's some examples, college level. Three traits you believe are important for a special ed teacher. This is what I would do if I had you in my class, but I don't. 
A second values clarification activity. Five important events. Right? You're valuing events. I would have you move into small groups and look for patterns. Move the events into categories, and then you describe the categories and numbers within each group. Now, this would be a values clarification activity, but also would be a mathematical activity as you are learning to quantify things. And it would be a reasoning activity using inductive analysis, looking for groups. I get excited. Settle down. All right. Another strategy to use an application of Kohlberg and Gilligan's ideas, as well as an application of Erickson and Marsh's idea. We do things for a reason. We use theories to put our strategies in a research-based context, and we use theories to help us understand behavior, not to predict behavior. End part six.